Most of the reviews you're going to see today for AMD's new Threadripper 2970WX and 2920X are going to be the usual review comparing them to all of their counterparts and how they compare price to performance wise and all that sort of stuff. So if you want to know that sort of information this video isn't necessarily for you as I don't have the chips available to test you know against these and see how well they do in comparison. This video is more going to be about why you would pick up either of these chips, how they perform on their own and also uh, kind of who they're for. So if you've been living under a rock and you don't know much about Threadripper, Threadripper is AMD's high-end desktop platform uh, kind of workstation class CPU. These are incredibly large chips physically as well as the fact that they actually have four dies on them that all have the Infinity Fabric connection between them to effectively cross communicate. This means that they can have some incredible power while still actually being relatively easy to manufacture. Thanks to this ease of manufacture and a number of other factors, Threadripper CPUs tend to be significantly cheaper than their Intel counterparts, especially on a core for core basis. In terms of the specs of these chips themselves, the 2970WX is a 24 core, 48 thread, effectively workstation CPU. That's what the W in the WX stands for there. In terms of its clock speed, it's a 3 gigahertz base with I think a 4.2 or 4.3 gigahertz boost, although the all core boost sits somewhere between 3.8 and 4 gigahertz, depending on the sort of setup and what application you're running. You have a total of 64 megabytes of L3 cache, although bear in mind that because these chips are made up of multiple dies, there's actually only 16 megabytes per die as with a standard Ryzen CPU. Otherwise, you also have 64 PCIe lanes available, which is awesome, and you have a price tag of $1,299, or a pretty similar pound amount. And with the 2920X, that one is a 12 core and 24 thread CPU with a 3.5 gigahertz base clock and 4.3 gigahertz boost clock, although all core, again, sits around about four gigahertz, which is definitely impressive. In terms of the die count, there's only two dies that are in operation in this chip, so with this one, you only have 32 megabytes of L3 cache, although that is still 60 megabytes, megabytes per die. And you have a price tag of $649, and again, a pretty similar amount in pounds. In terms of comparisons to their Intel counterparts on the core and price side of things, uh, the 2970 actually sits in a, a sort of category of its own, both in price and in its core count, until Intel releases their new uh, sort of Skylake X refresh CPUs, which are gonna be a bit higher core counted. Uh, for the moment though, Obviously, this one is a 24 core. The closest that we can get is the 7980XE, which is an 18 core and is uh, also good, a good bit more expensive at £2,000 rather than about £1,300. And the 2920, that one compares pretty well to the 7920X, which is again a 12 core CPU and actually has a very similar base and boost clock setup. Although I believe the uh, Ryzen CPU does have a bit more L3 cache, although because of the fact that they're different architectures, that's not necessarily as big of a deal as you might think it is and in terms of pricing uh, the 7920X is a thousand pounds whereas obviously the 2920 as I said is about 650. Moving on to the performance as I said this video is mostly focusing on how they perform sort of on their own at least in comparison to each other rather than to uh, you know the Intel CPUs and stuff like that as I don't have any to test. If you do want to check out those comparisons people like Ian Cutchers from Anantech do an in uh, just an insane job at actually benchmarking them very well so feel free to go check out those reviews and plenty of other reviews. I'm sure people like Linus will be reviewing them in good time and hard work and that sort of stuff. So go check those guys out if you fancy. So starting off with Cinebench, we have 175 and 176 points for single threaded and 4,000, basically 4,400 and 2,600 for the respective chips, which is incredibly impressive. In terms of 3D Mark Firestrike, this was the 1080p CPU physics score result. And as you can see, the 2970WX just doesn't seem to work that well here not too sure why. In terms of the Blender BMW rendering test, uh, the 2970 was actually a full minute faster, which is incredibly impressive. And then Premiere Pro rendering a video, um, actually the Ryzen second gen unboxing. As we can see, the 2920 is actually faster here, although I'll talk about why that is in a second. In terms of gaming results, again, the 12 core is faster here with actually better minimums and maximums as well, as you would kind of expect, although again, we'll talk about that in a second. In terms of player unknowns battle guns there is actually a pretty significant difference here with the 12 core coming out a good bit ahead and there was a lot of stuttering on the 24 core here it was actually pretty difficult to actually get the benchmark result run so uh, 
um, bear that in mind. And then Fortnite actually does a pretty good job. Fortnite seems to be a, a little bit more optimized for uh, high, high core count CPUs. So that's quite nice to see and uh, yeah decent result. There's a couple of things I don't know if I had time in the voiceover to uh, kind of get through that I want to just briefly cover first of all especially with the Premiere Pro results that one is uh, very much biased towards the lower core but higher clock speed chips there is a there's a definitely a, a sort of curve of you know single to eight cores generally is a pretty linear curve up but once you get to eight to ten cores you basically see no performance improvements and then it becomes very clock speed bound so so having a, an ultra high core CPU in something like Premiere doesn't matter too much, but apparently uh, programs like DaVinci Resolve, which is also a very big and very industry standard um, editing and color grading software, that one actually does support uh, basically any core count you like. So uh, bear that in mind if you are a video editor and you're looking for a chip like this. I've left a link to Puget Systems who do a whole load of testing and research on this sort of stuff uh, if you want to find out a bit more about why Premiere Pro is, is not great for cores. And and of course in the gaming applications you saw that the 24 core was often slower than the 12 core and there's a reason that it has the W in its name it's a workstation chip it's not meant for gaming so if you are you know if you do want to play games in it especially at 1440p and 4k it will be fine you know if you're a content creator but occasionally play some games you will be fine with it but just bear in mind that if you're planning on buying it primarily for gaming I, I wouldn't recommend that so why would you buy either of these chips well, the 24 core is actually a fairly hard one to sell you. If you're, you know, someone who does sort of 3D modeling or you know video editing with DaVinci Resolve or anything that can utilize high core counts and you need stuff done fast, then this is a nice option. If you're someone who games though, this isn't for you. If you're a content creator that uses Premiere, this isn't for you. There's a lot of caveats and there, there's not much software that, that runs with something like 24 cores very well and scales well with the, the core counts right now so perhaps this is going to be great in five or ten years when the software is caught up but for the time being it's pretty hard to recommend it to anyone who doesn't have a very specific use case for it. With the 12 core though it's actually a bit easier to recommend. It works great for Premiere, it works great for gaming and everything in between so if you are a gamer, streamer, content creator, someone like me basically this is almost the perfect CPU for you. Sure, your 1080p gaming results won't be quite as high as a 9900K, but you get some pretty awesome rendering performance as well as also being able to game and render at the same time and have no problems with that. So there's certainly a use case for that one and its price being basically the same price as the 9900K, but four extra cores is, uh, is pretty compelling for the, the right sort of use cases. But would I put either of these in my rig? Well, the 2970WX is just not for me. I'm not a workstation user. I don't 3D model and you know render everything only on my CPU and I generally just don't have any use case for it and generally speaking it would just slow down my gaming performance so it's not for me. If you have a use case for it it's still a great CPU it's still an incredible value for money when you compare it to the Intel counterparts at least on paper anyway and overall it's just uh, you know fairly recommended if you have a use case for it. The 2920X though, that one I would give a massive yes to. That is an awesome CPU, I highly recommend it if you're after an incredible gaming and productivity CPU and you want to do a bit of both even at the same time sometimes. Um, all of that is, is perfectly possible and as I said still a great value for money especially when you compare it core for core. But that is my thoughts, I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Do you like either of these CPUs, are these just too high end for you or is this something that you're planning on picking up in the near future? Uh, does the 24 core chip actually offer something for you? you know, is, that, is that something that you could use for work if they pay for it or whatever else? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Of course, if you want to buy either of these chips, then you can check out the links in the description down below. That will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this. You can also support the channel by using the links in the description. There's Patreon where you can support me directly and thank you to all the patrons who are already supporting me. You can also check out stuff like the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links so if you're buying from any of those places it doesn't cost you anything to use them you just click on them before you buy and it massively helps me out you can also check out the other links there's private internet access which is a great and cheap vpn i use myself uh, there's merch if you want to pick up a t-shirt like this one or plenty of other non titanium gb related designs and of course if you want to just subscribe with notifications on that doesn't guarantee you'll get videos as i've seen recently but you can if you fancy i do videos every monday wednesday and friday with live streams on thursday nights and there's plenty of other videos over here 
here for you to check out too. You can also check out the other 2950X review if you fancy as well. Um, but yeah, I guess that's kind of that really. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.